She's the push she brought from the Bronx, New York. Follow her voice, a straight dog is nice. She's the push she brought from the Bronx, oh yeah. Don't be surprised if you want to listen twice. Make decisions, find the right choice. Know yourself better, find your own voice. It's okay if you need help today, cause everybody needs a little push. From the push she brought from the Bronx, New York. Good morning and welcome Transformation Talk Network listeners. My name is Ellen Stewart and I am the Pushy Broad from the Bronx. Welcome to my show, Recovery Recharged, where we share advice and support from experts in addiction, recovery, and life. I love this next topic. Okay, this is light and fun and also very important for us out there. I love taking surveys. I love to find out what kind of person I am so that I can help myself better. I want to get an idea of where I'm going in life, what my aptitudes are, what I'm good at, and what I should nurture. So I decided to take a test myself and also bring on an expert to talk to us about it. This is Discover Who You Are. So if you're still vacillating back and forth, especially on the drive to work, saying to yourself, what am I doing and why am I here? Then I have the expert for you this morning. Let me tell you about Erin Slutsky. Erin is a life coach, a speaker, and an Enneagram practitioner. She's got 25 plus years of experience. She empowers women in midlife to feel seen, heard and understood. And that kind of makes me feel warm and fuzzy because she has such a wonderful approach. Her clients are able to embrace their identity, speak their truth and find their unique direction and purpose. That's a very powerful claim. So we're going to find out how she does it. And we're going to talk about something called the Enneagram. So the Pushy Broad and Recovery Recharged welcomes my guest, Erin Slutsky. Good morning, Erin. How are you? Hello, everyone. It is great to be here. I am so glad. Okay, I'm going to get right to it. First of all, Enneagram is spelled E-N-N-E. A-G-R-A-M. It is spelt exactly the way it sounds, Enneagram. And the big question here is, what is that? I love how you just went right for it, right? Enneagram. It's a hard word to say, but once you got it, you got it. I'll break down the word for you really quick. Ennea means nine. Gram, think of a diagram. So there's nine points on the diagram of the Enneagram symbol. That helps you understand a little bit about what it is. But imagine if you had a tool that made you just feel known and understood. And it's like something was reading your mind. That's what the Enneagram does. It helps you feel seen, heard, and understood. Seen, heard, and understood. All right. So how did you come to this? And how was it transformative? So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I remember when my oldest daughter got her driver's license and drove away for the very first time. I just kind of watched her go without me. It was scary. And then I thought, wait, I got to do this three more times because I've got four daughters. I stood there in the driveway. I'm like, now what? They're starting to leave the nest. Who am I? What do I want? what am I doing with my life? And I felt really lost and a little scared, to be honest. It was around that time that the Enneagram entered my life. And that was the tool that helped me just learn to know myself and accept myself, warts and all. So what, so you sit down, right? Practically, which is what I did. You sit down and you answer these questions, right? You take a kind of a test. Yes. Explain the logistics of this. Okay. So if you went to my website and took my Enneagram test, one of the very first instructions I give you is to think back 
to your early 20s. What were you like? What were you interested in? What did you and your friends like to do? Because at that time, our ego is the biggest and we're all about ourselves. We're coming out of that parental um, covering, right? And we're starting to explore the world on our own and trying to discover who we are and what we like to do without the world getting its hands on us too much yet. So also... And also the restraints of children and and husbands and life and everything else. Okay, because I know a lot of people that I work with a lot of women just like you who are in their 40s, 50s and 60s and have been married for 30 years, have grown children. And now what? Right. How many how many women are you out there? I know you're out there everywhere. Now you're saying what for and what, and what am I going to do now? And what am I skilled? I don't have any skills. I don't know what to do. I don't know who I am. So this is a very big lesson. Erin is saying, go back to how you felt in your twenties, right? Whether you're in college or not, but in your early twenties, what are some of the things you wished for, hoped for, thought you would be good at, right? So you sit down on your website. What's the name of your website for us, please? ErinSlutsky.com. Okay. That's (laughs) E-R-I-N-S-L-U-T-S-K-Y.com. And you start to take the Enneagram test. How long will this test take? I would give yourself about 10 minutes, Ten find, minutes. A, find a quiet place undisturbed. So you can really think about because some of the questions you just may not have ever thought about asking yourself. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not 100% accurate. No online test is it can't factor in your mood. It can't factor in your body language. And so that's why I offer a free typing interview for after you take that test and we can talk about your results. Is it accurate? I have special questions I can ask to confirm your type. Okay. So now tell us, because the Enneagram talks about types. Give me an idea of what types you could be. Well, there's nine different types one through nine, and they each have kind of like a characteristic. For example, the type one, it might be considered the perfectionist, someone who is all about right and wrong, black and white, good and bad. The type two is the helper. They're always putting other people first. And you know what? As women, our roles kind of put us in that position as mothers, wives, sometimes bosses. And we're helping people, but we got to be careful that that's not why we're doing it, to help people figure out why you're doing that. Type three is the achiever, goal-oriented, success, ambitious. Type four is the creative. They're so um, uh, imaginative and kind of dreamy. Type five is the investigator, or they love to analyze and um, research things. Type six is the loyalist. These are some of your very best friends that you want next to you. Type seven, the enthusiast. They take risks and go for it. Type eight is the challenger. Someone who you walk into, you know them. Everyone knows the type eight. They walk into the room and they have taken charge. And the type nine is considered the peacemaker. They are the ones that want and wants everyone to get along and wants their life to be peaceful. That's really very interesting. I think if I remember com- correctly, it was the enthusiast, I think. Okay, I, maybe the type seven. Category. Yes, I think. You have a lot of enthusiasm and for sure. I have a lot of enthusiasm and I took that. And also, I also resonated with um, the one... Um, Four, what's what's step four? What's the four is the creative, um, someone five. who wants to be unique. Five uh-huh. is the um five is the the person who is always researching and into books uh-huh. and knowledge. They're knowledge. I, I do a lot of that too. I do a lot yeah. of that. Okay. So Basically, what you're talking about is to sit down and concentrate and find different ways to become more self-aware. Don't you think that's the purpose? Absolutely. 
So why is that important to us? So have you ever tried to make a decision and you just didn't know which way to go? If you are with breakfast, (laughs) or the menu, right? At the restaurant. If you're self-aware, you don't have to question it. You know your values. You know what's important to you. You know what you're afraid of and what to avoid. And you can stay focused and in the direction that you are supposed to go, not other people, not the way you've been told to go, right? We've all been like put upon us these um, expectations. If we are being true to ourselves and we want to show up authentically and fully, self-awareness is the key. It's certainly the first part, for sure. But sometimes, like we said, if we're not going to go to a coach, if we're not going to go to a therapist, if we're not going to read books and podcasts, here is an easy way to get a start on finding out what you're most comfortable with, who you are in so many new and unique ways. So tell us about your taking the test, how long ago it was, what they told you about your type, and how you applied this information. Yeah, I think it was about 10 years ago or so, I took a test online and it typed me as a type two, the helper. Like I had mentioned before, we're put in these roles. And at the time I was in the midst of some heavy parenting and um, just being in that role of helping people. But something wasn't aligned. It, it it wasn't what motivated me. It wasn't what, you know, turned me on. I felt almost obligated to help people and at that point. So then I took another test and it typed me as a type one. And I'm like, yes, that's it. I'm the perfectionist. I want everything just so. And then I was in another setting and I took it a third time. <laughs> and it typed me as a type three, the achiever. And when I read the description about how I want things to look perfect, not necessarily be perfect, a light bulb went off. I'm like, yes, I'm more about how things appear, how things look on the outside, where the inside can be messy. I'm about achievement. Back in my 20s, I was in nursing school. Okay, so what? I was the president of my class. I was the ambassador for the college. I mean, when I do something, I go all out. I raise to the top. I want to be the best. That's the type three. I felt almost naked, (laughs) like like I was being found out, like someone knew what was going on inside my head, inside my heart, and I just couldn't believe it. It was a, a struggle between, oh, somebody knows me. And, oh, my gosh, somebody knows me. (laughs) (laughs) I understand. I hear you. But most importantly, you now know you. The good sides, the bad sides. The perfectionist, that's not a positive trait. And yet, the person who's willing to face it and look at it and strive to be better. So, now that you had this information that you are a conglomerate of one, two, and three, what did you do? How did you move forward? So I remember the first time that it just clicked how I can use this in a practical way. I was sitting on the couch having what I would call a heated discussion with my husband. (laughs) And he got up and left the room. I was hurt by that because this is something that would typically happen in our heated conversations. And I'm like... I feel abandoned. I feel like he just got up and left and forgot about me. Well, he had also taken the Enneagram test and he's a type five. Which is again? He's that um, investigator, that researcher, that analyzer. Right. And I remembered that and I'm like, oh yeah, he needs space and time to think through his response. And he would explain that to me. He's like, I don't want to hurt you back. And so I need to remove myself from the situation. He would come back. And he always comes back with a wise, thoughtful answer or solution. And I'm like, oh, so now I can give him 
that space and time and not be hurt by it. So that helps the communication and helps the relationship. That's absolutely. absolutely wonderful. So let's move into how you have taken this transform yourself and carve out a career. Let's move to that. Well, I thought about at that same time, I'm like, what do I want to do? What, what lights me up? Is it this thing that I've been doing? Not really. But what part of that do I like? I love working with women. I love watching them cr- find those insights and those way out, uh, ways out of their situations that they feel stuck in. I'm like, huh, what is this life coaching thing? Let me look into that. And so I created my life coaching business based on the Enneagram because I know how powerful of a tool it was for me to create that self-awareness. I wanted to give it to other people to use for their own um, personal growth work. It also helps me be a better coach so I can speak their language. I know where they're coming from. I know where they're going to get tripped up. So the results are much quicker. You also talk about the fact that the Enneagram is responsible for so many other things in communication, personal and professional relationships. Give us some examples of that based on your clients, some good success stories. So I remember one of my clients, she called me on her way home from work and she just said, oh, I get it now. Now we had been working together using the Enneagram for about a year. She had a lot of work to do, but there was something that, that just sparked her eyes to you know be open. She's like, I get it now. I need to show up at work accepting myself so I can advocate for myself. She was Um, working in a male-dominated field, and she wasn't getting the promotion that she deserved because she was a woman. So she, once she opened her eyes to that, her eyes were open, she was able to go into her boss's office the next day and ask for that promotion. Guess what? She got it. She's leading a team at this company and just... I don't want to say climbing the ladder because she's actually saying, you know what? I have more skills than I realize. I might go over here to this other career. (laughs) I hear you. And that's wonderful. But sometimes advocating for ourselves can lead to conflict. So tell me, how can women navigate these situations using the Enneagram framework? Well, kind of like the situation with me and my husband, knowing the different types is super helpful. For example, Ellen, I don't know your type. But I can get a sense of how what motivates you and how you come across, right? I mean, you're not going to name your your show a bossy broad if you are someone who's quiet and demure and just doesn't like conflict. <laughs> so <laughs> you can understand other people better and understand where they're coming from and not push your agenda on other people. Right. I understand. Yes. Go ahead. Continue. So it's that understanding and empathy that the Enneagram builds into relationships, whether it be personal or professional relationships. So when you're advocating for yourself, what you need to do is check yourself first. Am I coming from an authentic place? Is this really how I want to show up? Where's my worth? Right. Is my worth in this job, in this position, in this paycheck? Or is it somewhere else? What's most valuable to me? Right. And then then also discover exactly who you are, right? And be able to work in that vein. Were you going to say something else? Right. And, And so understanding your type, what your values are, and sticking with that will help you take the next step and just accept yourself, right? Okay. I know that I struggle with failure, for example. What am I going to do in this situation if it doesn't go well? What am I going to do in this situation if it does go well? Playing out those scenarios. Then you can show up authentically. It gives you courage. It gives you that confidence to ask for what you want. Now, I do want to say something about that with women, especially sometimes we just don't know what we want. Well, this is where the Enneagram can help, right? Absolutely. We've always been putting other people's desires, wants, needs ahead of ours. 
when we know what we want, we can ask for what we want and what we deserve. And that's that self-advocacy. So the Enneagram can be found on your website. Let's tell everybody where it is again. ErinSlutskyCoaching.com. Okay. And I know that you work with clients virtually, so you're able to work with them nationally and international as well. And mm-hmm. I know that your bailiwick is women entering midlife with their needs and priorities. So talk to me about this age group, because that's where you are, and how you find the women really beginning to make changes in their lives. What have you seen? Yeah, I'm finding that women in midlife are starting to question things. They're reevaluating their life at this time. Who am I? Who's this person next to me that's been with me for 30 years? Do I even like them anymore? <laughs> right? What about my career? Am I going to retire early? Or am I going to do something else after this? Because I don't know about you, but I feel like life is just getting started at this age. So that midlife time is a time of rediscovering who you are. Do you find that many women in midlife that that, that go through this and have the awareness and are completely reevaluating everything, how many of those women are thinking about divorce? Many. They call many. it the great divorce. You yeah. call it what? The great divorce? The gray divorce. Oh, the gray divorce. Yeah. What does that mean? Women in midlife or even men in midlife. They're very different than they were 30 years ago. The person you married is a different person. The person you were is very different. And you know what? I think it's okay to reevaluate and say, hey, I know I did it with my own husband. When my kids started leaving the nest, I'm like, do I even like you? I want to like you at the end of this. And so we've made the efforts and done the work to actually enjoy each other again. Of course, especially when you have children, because that's, of course, your priority. And then when everybody's gone, that whole empty nesting syndrome, you turn around and it's just you and your husband and you have to rediscover yourself again. So I have found also in the couples that I work with many times, if you're going to put in the work to rediscover and you're both both going to be aware that the relationship becomes nurtured and stronger than ever in a very, very different way, which is wonderful. In recovery, we believe that change is good all the time. That change is the number one thing that we strive for. So what you're saying basically is you started, you understood that you had to change, and now the Enneagram is giving us a way to learn the first steps in how to change. Would you say that was accurate? I think so. And the change happens because we've adjusted who we are. Sometimes, especially women, we've given up who we are. So the change is like a change back to who we truly are. Okay. So being their authentic self, but you're absolutely right. Women tend to give up themselves to have other priorities. Okay. So I want to focus on a couple of other things. First of all, it's erinslutsky.com and it's the Enneagram, E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. 10 minutes of your time, people, it will change your life. And Erin told us that her husband took it. So men, you are not absolved from this. Take a look and see what's going on. Now I want to talk to you about this fall, Demystifying Menopause, a four-week program that you are sponsoring. What's that all about? Tell us what's going on here. So just like we're talking about midlife coaching, There's an aspect of midlife that can be dreaded, that can be scary, that can be confusing and overwhelming. Women and men actually go through a change physically in their bodies. We're losing estrogen, something we've had since puberty, right? (laughs) And findings are that we need it in our body as long as possible. How do we do that? How do we um, get the care that we deserve? How do we find the physicians, the practitioners that can help us uh, navigate menopause that 
change in our bodies and get the care that we deserve. Also, the things like we had talked about today, the relational changes, the emotional changes. It's not just our physical body, our, our mind. A lot of people talk about brain fog. So in demystifying menopause, I'm going to go through menopause 101. What are the symptoms? What exactly is it? And what you can do about it. Now, I am not a physician, but I am connected with many practitioners that can help you with that aspect of it. We also need to take care of our bodies physically with the right nutrition in midlife. It's very different than before. Same with exercise. So all of this is called Demystifying Menopause. It's a four-week program, and we can find this at where? Where do we find it? ErinSlutskyCoaching.com backslash Demystifying Menopause. Demystifying Menopause. It sounds very intriguing and very mysterious and extremely helpful. I have many clients that are going through this. So Erin Slutsky, Demystifying Menopause. Sign up for the four-week program. You will not be disappointed. Take the Enneagram test with Erin. She's here to help you. I am so thrilled to have her here today because I want you to be able to take the first step in really finding your identity and finding who you are for the next journey. This is a perfect time. Erin, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank and- you, Ellen. All of you out there, we'll see you next time. This this is Ellen Stewart, the pushy broad from the Bronx, saying thanks for listening. And remember, everybody needs a little push. From the pushy broad from the Bronx, New York.